Hi, I'm Kevin Hildebrand. The most important job of the church organist is to lead the singing of the congregation. And in this video, we'll explore ways to help our hymn playing in order to encourage good singing. Now, for good hymn playing, there's a number of considerations for us to think about. First of all, the tempo of the hymn, how fast or how slow shall we sing? And to start talking about tempo, really let's talk about the pulse of the hymn, the steady beat, or kind of the heartbeat of the hymn. Let's listen to a little bit of the hymn, The Church's One Foundation. That's hymn 644 in Lutheran service book. Let's hear if we can uh, dis dis determine that pulse, a half note pulse as we, as we listen to this first phrase. If we mentally and physically organize our playing into two half note beats per measure, one, two, one, two, the melody can fit right on top of that pulse. We want to establish that pulse even on hymns that have a triple meter, like all glory be to God on high. And if we establish the dotted half in this hymn as the pulse, we feel we want that hymn to swing a little bit like this. You hear that, how we can have one, two, one, two as we go along, and then that triple meter, those groups of three in the melody fit right on top of that. That helps the congregation singing move along and move forward without letting it drag, without letting it rush. One thing that we should also remember is to consider the entire hymn in our playing and the establishing of the tempo. Uh, when we look at the hymn, for instance, at the Lamb's High Feast we sing, we can notice that it begins with these broad half notes. However, in the middle of the hymn, it, the melody has continuous quarter notes. It begins with this, But in the middle, we have this quicker. Just be careful that you don't start that hymn too quickly, or the singers will run into problems when they get to the quicker quarter notes. In our hymn playing, we also want to phrase the hymns well. We want to breathe along with the congregation at the ends of each phrase and in between stanzas. So for us as organists, we want to have a lift of the sound at the end of those lines. Let's go back to the church's one foundation. And you'll notice at the end of each line of each phrase in this hymn, we have this dotted half note. And we want the organ to breathe along with the congregation. We need to have a beat of rest in our playing. One, two, three. And on beat three is where we will want to have a breath. We'll just lift the keys and the pedals at that point. Do you hear how at the ends of those phrases, we have one beat where we're lifting the hands and the feet. So we have a beat of breath. 
Notice that we're not adding an extra beat in there. We're just simply lifting, in this case, on beat three. One, two, three, four, one, two, lift. That way the organ and the singers are breathing together. We want to do a similar thing at the end of the stanza so the singers have a clear indication of when to go to the next stanza. We usually need to add some extra time at the end of the stanza to make it clear that we've reached the end of the stanza and are preparing to go to the next one. Listen to this last phrase again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, lift. And then moving into the next stanza. If we don't add any extra beats, we would have a very short end of the stanza, and it may be unclear to the singers that it's time to start the next one. A hymn that ends in a whole note chord, such as Glory Be to Jesus, may be adequate to simply hold that chord for one, two, three beats, and then lift on beat four, like this. With a short hymn, ending in a whole note chord, that may be sufficient. Whatever method you use at the end of the hymn, before you go to the next stanza, be consistent from stanza to stanza to help make it clear for the singers. Another consideration for us to think about are hymns that have continuous quarter notes, something like Jesus, Refuge of the Weary. And in that hymn, it's easy to want to add an extra beat in the middle of the phrase to give the congregation a place to breathe. But in doing so, it destroys that sense of pulse that we're maintaining, like this. Did you hear how that extra beat in there kind of through a wrench into the pulse, and it destroyed that sense of steady beat that we had. It's not necessary to do that in order to have a good breath. I think if we just lift the last note of the phrase a little quicker and just have a slight stretch without adding an extra beat, the congregation will be okay, like this. That way, our steady pulse of one, two, one, two is maintained all the way through the hymn. Another idea for us to consider are hymns that have pickup chords, like Dear Christians, One and All Rejoice. Playing that initial chord slightly detached will help to accent the next chord, the downbeat of that line, and help make the pulse clear. That same kind of technique is used in the hymn A Mighty Fortress, where if we play our initial chord, the pickup, slightly detached, we can help accent the strong beat and keep the steady pulse moving along for the singers. All of this assumes that you as the organist are very familiar with the hymn and know the notes very well. If you're struggling with a hymn in your practice time, go ahead and write in fingering and pedaling marks and practice slowly. Practice hands separately. Practice one hand and pedal 
so that you maintain and, and gain confidence and knowledge of that hymn. And don't worry about playing alternate or additional harmonizations. If you're still having trouble with the version in the hymnal, it's better to play something simple and accurately than try to do something else. So with these ideas, you can help encourage, lead, enliven, and support your congregational singing. Be sure to watch our other videos with other ideas about hymn playing and service playing. Thanks for watching.